I never knew why his wife left, but it was like her living had pulled a blanket over Martin's head. I expected to find him struggling under the earthworm I dug up every day. I worked at that house for years. All we talk about was the weather and the garden and how hot it was. He seemed lost. I think we were both away. I often had the feeling that he wanted to tell me something. Something important. But he always fell apart at the last minute. Cracked like the pavement in the suburbs. My friends from the neighborhood were fascinated by this creature who walked around his huge house. He had no one to tell him what to do anymore. When I was home, I never dreamed. But in this small room, I dreamed every night. And I dreamed in colors. I think it was a way to escape at first. But then it was a trap. And every dream I had was about losing something. It scares me that we are all part of a circle. Time follows its arrow and we watch it go past. We watch ourselves, passengers watching passengers, vultures watching vultures. I sat alone in that room. All of my belongings around me. Ghosts keeping me company. I used any excuse to get out of there. I wash up and escape and then hide outside the walls for as long as I can. I took my own sadness with me. My daughter was a stranger to me now. Our sacrifices are never understood by the ones we love. That night had a strange feeling. The light was uneasy on my skin. The car engine was on in the garage. The door was shut, but the light was on.
And that's when I saw him. Martin sitting in his car. I didn't know what he was doing at first. Then I saw everything. I lifted my hand to ask him if he was okay. He didn't want my help. I think he just needed me to see him, to be with him, to be a passenger and to watch the arrow as it pushed past. <laughs>